Welcome to Quantum's online training videos. In this video, we discuss how to fill the reservoir in the SKF, MLP, and MLPI control units for the SKF multi-lube autogreaser systems. The MLP and MLPI control units are fitted with a reservoir used to store the grease used for all these automatic greasing activities. A level gauge is mounted to the front of the reservoir. The level indication is provided by a magnet which is attracted to a piston riding along the top of the grease in the tank. This level gauge provides a great visual indication on when grease replenishment may be needed. Also, the control unit is fitted with a proximity sensor which triggers an alarm for the low level condition. Just as a warning, when the time comes to add grease to the reservoir, only add grease via the fill port located here. Don't try to open the tank to add grease. It'll make a big mess and you'll get super, super upset and waste a lot of time. Trust me on this one. So use only the fill port here to add grease. Also, the type of grease added is important. The control unit is designed to operate with NLGI 0, 1, or 2 type grease. However, most importantly, the grease must have a viscosity of at least 46 centistokes at the intended operating temperature. If the ship plans to travel into really warm climates, this could be an issue. On the flip side, if the grease is too viscous or the pipe length is too long, then that could be an issue too. So keep these in mind when selecting the grease to use. Finally, Take a quick, common sense look at the control unit reservoir compared to the size of the grease container you plan to use to fill it. If you plan to use a normal hand-operated grease gun with these little grease tubes, you could be at it for a while. It takes me like a thousand strokes to deplete a grease tube using this guy. So if this reservoir could hold 20 of these tubes, then it'll take me like 20,000 strokes. N not my idea of a fun workout. So, an electric or pneumatic pumping unit may be a smarter option. So, let's get started. The first step is to check the condition of the grease filter. Mounted on the fill port is a filter to help remove debris from grease being added to the unit. To access the filter, remove the male quick disconnect fitting from the fill port on the control unit. Then remove the filter from the base of the male quick disconnect fitting. Clean the filter in a non-caustic solvent or acquire a replacement filter. Install the cleaned or new filter in the male quick disconnect fitting and install it back onto the fill port. Test the grease gun or pump to ensure it's working. Connect the grease gun or pump to the fill port using the female quick disconnect fitting provided with the control unit. We've seen some installations where people have added manual grease points to the control unit outlet lines and used these points to try to fill the reservoir. Filling the reservoir like that is a primary cause of overpressure, the AHP alarm, on the control unit. So please, only use the fill port here to fill the reservoir with grease. Next, engage or actuate the grease pump. Monitor the magnetic indicator, which will move up as the reservoir is filled. When you're done, disconnect the grease gun or pump from the fill port. Air trapped in the autogreaser will cause the autogreaser to fault. Therefore, after filling the reservoir, but before putting the autogreaser into routine service, you may need to purge air from the autogreaser discharge. Loosen the bleed valve on the side of the autogreaser by turning the hex counterclockwise. Press the set button on the autogreaser interface to manually start the autogreaser pump. Monitor the bleed valve while the autogreaser is operating. Continue to run the autogreaser until grease is consistently expelled from the bleed valve. Close the bleed valve by turning the hex fully clockwise and press the set button on the autogreaser interface to stop the autogreaser pump. If this is a new autogreaser installation or the unit has been idle for a while, 
you'll need to make sure the piping is full of grease also. Don't try to use the auto greaser to fill up the piping. It'll take forever. Instead, do it manually, or better yet, with an electric or pneumatic grease pump. You'll have to fill the lines in two phases. The lines between the auto greaser control unit and the doser, and then the lines from the doser to the hole unit. To fill the lines between the control unit and the doser, disconnect the outlet lines from the control unit and disconnect the inlet lines to the doser. Attach a grease fitting to the outlet lines from the control unit and pump until grease comes out the other end, which is the inlet to the doser. Then reconnect the piping. To fill the lines between the doser and the hole unit, disconnect the piping from the hole unit, then remove the doser from the base plate and install this filling attachment. Attach your grease pump to either of these grease nipples and pump until grease comes out the piping at the hole unit. Then reconnect the piping and remove the filling attachment and reinstall the doser. Monitor the auto greaser as it completes three or four cycles. If the auto greaser indicates an ALP alarm, then try bleeding air from the reservoir and or check that the piping is full. And you're done. Grease has now been successfully added to the control unit reservoir. Woohoo!